Had for 10 minutes, get the tears off his eyes, amen? Uh, good guy. Listen, uh, Yuri forgot to announce that uh, we do have sign language classes here, and usually it's on the second, third, and fourth uh, Tuesdays, but since the ladies messed me up, Anyways, we're going to start Tuesday of this week, be the first class, and then the third and fourth week will be sign language class for those that, that come to sign language classes, okay? And so be sure to show up and uh, come and learn some sign language. I, I went down to Verizon yesterday to get my uh, Verizon bill straightened out. I don't know what's wrong with those people. They keep saying I owe them money. I pay them every month. <laughs> so anyways, <laughs> anyway, I talked to the guy and he says, I was... Uh, on YouTube and trying to learn sign language. And I said, really? He said, yeah, I had some deaf folks that come in and I had a hard time communicating with them. So I thought I'd uh, try to learn sign language. Well, I said, well, I teach it every Tuesday. He said, you do? I said, yes. He said, well, how much does it cost? I said, nothing. I said, it's my ministry. He said, well, I'll be there. So I give him my, uh, the dates and everything. So I hope he shows up and, uh, and um, learn some sign language. Amen. Yeah, you never know. You never know when you run into some deaf folks. I mean, God's good. Uh, it's been good to be away. I, I was away for a week and a half and uh, just visiting some folks, my kids and all. And, uh, God's good. God's good. I, I, I'll have to admit, I'll have to admit, I got a little Gucci mouth, but due to the fact that my wife passed away three years ago on the 26th of December, and uh, we have a tendency as old human beings, we get down, you know, we... We miss those that are gone. We know they're in better place than we are. Amen? And especially they're saved. And so I'm glad my wife's in heaven. And I look forward to seeing her again. Amen? And, um, and uh, it's going to be a great time. Amen? What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. And I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. When he takes me by the hand and leads me to the promised land. Woo, what a day that will be. Amen? amen? Amen. Are you saved this morning? Do you know Christ is your Savior? You can go ahead and say amen right there. It's all right. Amen. We're allowed to say amen over here. Amen? amen. We don't say all man. We say amen. amen. Okay. All right. You have your Bibles first. Please turn over to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10. I, I had, when I was going, a pastor asked me to preach this morning, and I knew I was going to preach. And while I was gone, uh, I had different messages come into my mind and, and I'm driving down the road thinking what am I going to say and I make little notes and this and that and uh, I got to one house and where they had so much to eat and I over eat, amen, what temptation did I have? Did any, has anybody had any temptations this past week? Come on now, fess up, now hold your hand up so God and everybody can see it, amen, yeah, we've all had temptations haven't we, amen? I mean, whether it's been good or bad, we've had temptations the past year. My mind, we've had some many temptations. I've had temptations to go and shoot somebody. <laughs> but I won't mention their, his name, amen? <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have said, are you recording this back here? <laughs> amen. Well, anyways, temptation, getting away from temptation. You know, temptation gets in our lives every day, whether it's good or bad, amen? And we know how to, we, we should know how to defeat that. We, we should know how to get out of that temptation. And there's so many things that gets in our life that, that, that causes us to tempt, be in temptation. And uh, maybe it's jealousy or whatever. We get tempted every day as human beings. We're kept tempted. So we're there in 1 Corinthians. We read it a while ago. There in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13, the Bible says, There hath no temptation taken you. Uh, but such as is common to man. It's common to man to have temptation. Man. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are what? Able. Amen. So there in James chapter 1 and verse 12 or 2, the Bible says, My brethren, count it all joy uh, when you fall into divers temptations. Knowing this, he says, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Well, we need a lot of patience, don't we? Amen. There in James chapter 1, verse 12, the Bible says, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. 
Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted to God. For God, listen, for God cannot tempt. God made me do that. No, God didn't make you do that. Amen. The devil made you do it. Hello. You can say amen here. It's all right. You can say amen here. Amen. And so here, every man is tempted when he is drawn away from his own lust and enticed. And then, then when lust hath a, a conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Oh my. And do not err, my beloved brethren. So everyone will face temptations in our lifetime. Everyone. Some, uh, some of, of some kind will face every day in our life. The answer to your temptation, it will be tucked away here. Somewhere within this temptation itself. Again, back to uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 13. The Bible says, promises that. But will, what? With the temptation also, uh, make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. Amen? Amen? So you'll be able to bear it. Jesus, listen, Jesus himself uh, had temptation put on him. How? By using scripture. He says in, in Matthew Four, three, he said, and when the tempter came to him, he said, if, you, if thou be the Son of God, command these stones to be bread. But he answered and said, it's written, man shall not live by bread alone, but what, by what every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Right. Amen? So we stand on the promises of God, we'll be successful. Yeah. Amen? I don't know whether you know it or not, there's over 3,000 promises in the Bible. Isn't that a lot of, that's a lot of promises, Amen? And we can stand on, we know that's the truth. We, we, can, we can stand on His Word. When we get tempted, we can stand on His Word. And God brings us through those temptations. What a wonderful thing. I'm glad I'm saved this morning. Amen. Are you glad you're saved this morning? Amen. Because we face temptations every day. Every day. Oh my. So He, he, he used the Scripture there. Here, David escaped temptation. How? Many occasions of intimacy with the Lord. The book of Psalms is filled with David's experiences and his downfalls and his with his temptations that he had during his lifetime. Many temptations he had. Paul. Paul escaped temptation. How did he do that? Well, in Romans 7, 24, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? In verse 25, it says, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord, so then with the mind, myself, serve the Lord, the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. See, the old flesh wants to sin all the time, doesn't it? Amen? But when we got God, when we got His Word, that prevents us to have that temptation. Is anybody tempted this morning? I bet, I, you know, I think there's some folks that probably got up this morning and said, well, I don't believe I'm going to go to church this morning. Amen? I mean, you know, you know, well, I gotta come back to church Sunday night. I don't believe I want to go back to church Sunday night. Temptation, folks. Yeah. Amen. You know what? That's sin. That's sin. Right. Amen. And we, we do that. We, we do that. Here's a poem that says, here says the poem says, yield not to temptation, for yielding is sin. Each victory will help you some other way to win. Fight man manually. Onward, dark passions to do. Look ever to Jesus, he'll carry you through. Shun evil companions, bad language, disdain. God's name, hold in reverence, nor take it in vain. Be thoughtful and earnest, kind-hearted and true. Look ever to Jesus, he'll carry you through. Why does temptation come? Well, I'm glad you asked, man. Amen? <laughs> temptation comes, listen, it comes because there's several different causes. Uh, it's, it's normal to be tempted there. Again, back in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, 13. The Bible says there hath no temptation taken. What? You but such is common to man. But God is faithful who will what? Suffer you uh, to be tempted above that you are able. Amen? And so, but, 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 but he says here, but with the, the temptation also make a way to escape. Uh, that you may be able to bury it. Amen? And so there were, it's common to man. It's common to man to have that temptation. Every person experiences temptation in here. Man, don't think you're not just the only one that has temptations. There is, there's several, several people, there's several people, people and things that will tempt us, and we get tempted every day. 
And God is faithful to deliver us. Man, He's faithful. You know, we, we say God is good all the time. Right? God is good all the time. I don't care. Listen, I don't care what temptation you get in front of you. God will take care of it for you. Some of you are still asleep. Amen. Come on now. Amen. Hey, God will take care of it. I'm telling you, God will take care of it. Now, you're going to find out I'm a different type of preacher. Amen. You already noticed that, right? Shake your head, ma'am. Amen. You know, I'm just telling you, God is so good that He'll take care of the temptations that we have. I mean... Look for Manny. I know he's got more temptation than shake stick at. Amen. But God's blessed him. Take Brother Brown. Oh, he's blessed him too. Amen. Huh? And so, so God will always provide a way of escape. The problem with most of them is that they do not want to escape that 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 temptation that they have. Amen. Right. They don't want to escape it. They enjoy the sin that they're committing. That's right. Man. So to try our faith, we do, we do that to try our faith there in James chapter 1 and verse 2. The Bible says, My brother, count it all joy when you what? Fall into divers temptations. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith work in patience. It brings joy, amen, when you over, overcome that temptation, brother John. It brings joy, amen. Shake your head, amen, for me. Good. He's still asleep this morning, amen. It brings patience, amen. It brings you patience. The trying of our faith will bring strength. The more, listen, the more we overcome temptation, the stronger we become against temptation. And, and when I stop, listen, you, you're not going to believe this, but I used to smoke. That's why I'm so short. <laughs> My dad told me years ago, if you don't quit that smoking, you're going to be a real short fellow. I said, well, I guess. Here I am, Amen. Well, what a temptation. I remember I remember when I first got saved, that's been back 40-some years ago, uh, that I smoked. Okay? And uh, the, well, I was going to church, and I was doing some interpreting work, you know, in the church. But I just had to have that cigarette, put another nail on my coffin, in other words. Amen? And I hope some of you sir, don't take offense. Okay? I'm sorry, lady. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, uh, I, I would go, my, my pastor said to me, he said, uh, Lawrence, what, since you're an interpreter, why don't you start a Sunday school class? I said, oh, no, preacher, I can't do that. I can't do that. And he said, well, whenever you get ready. See, he knew the story, okay? And, uh, and uh, so I'd go out and I'd drive and I'd, I'd go down the road and I'd take a little cigarette and I'd throw it out the window. I'd get about five miles down the road and I'd say, mm -hmm. well, I got to have another cigarette. And I'd stop at 7-Eleven, drive 42 miles and buy four packs of cigarettes. That makes sense. <laughs> amen? Anybody ever been there? Come on, fess up. You're in the house of the Lord, amen? Hey, you've been there. Listen, I was tempted. I was tempted. But then I read this verse and I prayed about that. The next day, or that, that night I threw away the pack of cigarettes and the next day I quit. Amen. And I hadn't had a cigarette since, amen? amen. Of course, I hadn't grown much either. <laughs> but, but anyways, you know, God has taken that away and he get, may give me a way to escape that habit, amen? And there's people that's got all kinds of habits that are tempting to them, amen? Yes. Some of us like to eat a lot. Uh, I expect some of you folks over the Christmas holidays eat a whole lot, didn't you? Prior to that was Thanksgiving, right? Right, Brother Lee? Hey, yeah, see? You ought to see him at Christmas, I mean Thanksgiving. Boy, he was both hands. Man, I'm saying, boy, he is sinning right on out. Amen? Amen. Oh, listen, it tries our faith. And, and listen, I was tempted to take the habit again and again and again and again. But after several times of that temptation here, it left me because of the Word of God. Amen? So when I see someone smoking, I've never had the desire to smoke. <laughs> I can't stand to be around it. Amen? And again, I don't want to offend nobody, but that's just me. Amen? And so here, it, 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 
it brings to bring a, a crown of life. There in James chapter 1, verse 12, the Bible says, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation for what? For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that what? Oh, it's my water lady again. <laughs> Thank you. If I slightly cough, she is up here with a bucket of water. <laughs> what a blessing, see? I'm tempted to keep coughing. I don't know why, when I get to preaching, my, my, my throat gets tickling. And I can't hardly speak. But anyway, so I'm used to being a deaf and it's like a sign. I don't say much, but I sign it. You'll get that after a while. <laughs> Amen. So God's expectation, listen, of each and enduring temptation is part of everyday Christian walk. We'll have those temptations daily. Amen. We'll have that. And we're to gain strength daily for the trials and temptations for the next day. Amen, uh, uh, Marie? Amen. Amen. And so here, here Paul said in 2 Timothy 4, 8, he said, Henceforth there is what laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Amen. Amen. If he can get me, if he can, if he can get my temptation taken care of, he can take care of yours. Amen. If you love the Lord, amen. Do you love the Lord this morning? Amen. amen. Do you love the Lord this morning? Yes. Do you love the Lord this morning? Yes. It's better, amen. I want to make sure the Lord hears you, okay? Yes. Amen. So the, the cause of the temptation here in James chapter 1, verse 13, the Bible said, Let no man say he is what? Tempted. And I am tempted of God. More no. dogs. For God cannot be tempted with the evil, neither tempteth he any man. God does not tempt you, folks. <laughs> and we'll blame God for everything, don't we? Hello. We'll blame God. Well, He tempted me. He told me to do this. He told me to do that. I'm sorry I've done that now. Yeah. So we blame But God doesn't do that. Man, I want you to understand that. Listen, He says there, He says, But every man is tempted when he is what? Drawn away from his own lust. And enticed. And then, when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Yeah. Bringeth forth death. Do not err, beloved love, brother. Temptation is not from the God. It's not from our God. God cannot be tempted with evil. And neither tempted he any man, according to the Bible. So we are we're tempted. Through other things, other means, our own way, we're tempted to do that. Every man is tempted in himself. He is drawn away. He is drawn away by his own lust. He's enticed, the Bible says, to be entrapped, to be entrapped or indulged in, 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 in the things of, that's against God. Amen? So your temptation uh, comes, my temptation comes, when we let our lust run uh, without check or control. So, so we choose to sin. Prior to our salvation, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't have that choice. Since salvation, Amen. We do not, we we do not have the choice. Each of us choose which sin we commit. Does that make sense? Does it make, make sense to you, Amen? So sin is a small matter in its in its commencement, but the indulgence, listen, is no longer you, but Christ, listen, in you that makes all the decisions for you. Now, I'm talking to the saved people here. Many, probably, most Christians make the mistake that victory depends upon their ability to fight against sin and eventually gain, uh, gain victory over it. That's not correct at all. That's not correct. 1 John 5, 4, the Bible says, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that what? Overcometh the world. Even our faith. The word faith here, used, used here, is the same faith in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. For by grace, what? Are you saved through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. Amen? So it's our faith in God's grace that brings, that brings salvation. And the same faith that brought salvation also brings Christian victory over the world and its lusts. Amen? And so believe, believe and accept Romans 8 too. 
Bible says, For the law of the Spirit of life is Jesus Christ hath made me free. Praise God. Free. What? Free from the law of sin and death. Well, I'm set free when I receive Christ. Amen? Amen. Temptation, He's got them covered. He takes, them, he takes care of that for me. Amen? You see, you're here this morning and you're not saved. Well, I, I'll tell you what, I feel sorry for you. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just saying, listen, you need to be saved. You need to receive Christ as your Savior this morning. Amen? And there's, there's temptations. God will take care of those for you. Amen? Oh, listen. Not that His Spirit will or can do this, but, but that He has already done it. He's already done it. Amen? The law of sin and death is like the law of gravity. We've not, we've not choice in the matter. Once that law has been broken, then we're, we're at freedom to make, we're freedom to make that choice whether, whether to live a victory or not. Okay? That's our choice. Bear in mind that this is all quite, quite an act of faith. Amen? So faith must believe God is the entire absence, uh, absence of any feeling and, and tangible evidence here. So God's word is sure. His word is sure. <coughs> Excuse me. It never wavers. God's word never changes. It's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. It's going to be like that forever and ever until he comes back. Amen. And I'm glad of that. I'm glad of that. I'm glad it doesn't change from day to day. I'd be a nervous wreck, Brother Ralph. I really would. I hear it would be awful just to think I could lose my salvation this evening. How about it? It'd be, all, it'd be terrible to think I could lose my salvation when I put all my trust in Christ. Amen? Amen. The old devil says, yeah, you can, lose your, you can lose your salvation, dummy. Huh? See, he's tempting me. Yeah. Has, has the devil ever talked to you like that? Has the, has the devil ever spoke to you? What, just two or three onions? Amen? Mm. <laughs> well, the rest of us are just perfect. Amen? <laughs> Oh boy, our life that only belongs to Christ, but it's Christ. It, it will be a life of victory because Christ, listen, cannot fail. He cannot, hallelujah, amen. He cannot fail. Christ cannot fail, will not fail us, amen. <laughs> Christ wants us to let him do his work through, through us, those of you who are saved. Amen. If you're not saved, the devil's going to work through you. It's going to cause you chaos. It's going to cause you problems. It's going to cause you more turmoil than you can handle. Amen. It's going to cause you to even one day maybe get down on your knees and beg God to save you. Amen. I'd rather be ahead of the game. Go ahead and ask Him to save you right now. Amen. So do His work. He's not satisfied with being our just our helper. Amen. Just being our helper. He 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 he's he's better than that. It's, it, there's the physical evidence there. We're able to say, I know that His grace is sufficient to me. His grace is sufficient, for by grace are you saved. Through faith that not of yourself. Amen. Our life then only belongs to Christ and Christ alone. We have that victory because Christ cannot fail again, I say. So the thing that each of us must decide is, what will we do about temptation? What will we do about temptation? How can you deal with temptation? Is there victory over temptation? Yes. Yes, there is. I'm living proof of it in a lot of things in my life. Amen. Amen. And there's, there's, the, the, you can have that victory. And, and it's, it's there in Christ, in Christ, in Christ alone, only. We try to, we try to, I was preaching, I was teaching Sunday school class this morning, faith. Faith. Just take God's word. You know, we have problems, just take God's word. Amen. The devil will tell you, don't, don't listen to that stuff. That's not right. That's what the devil will do. That's what Satan will do. He'll whisper in your ear and tell you, well, that's not right. That's not right. You just be faithful to God. Amen. Amen. Just listen to him. To him that overcometh, God giveth the crown. Through faith we will conquer, through often and cast down. He who is our Savior, our strength will renew. Look ever to <coughs> Jesus. He'll carry you through. Ask the Savior to help you, comfort, strengthen, and keep you. He's willing to aid you. He will carry you through. He will carry you through. Listen, listen. He must become master of all of your life. You know, we'll, 
We'll come to church and we'll sing, Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. But do we really love him? See, we sing that because other people are singing. We might as well get involved in singing. But are you singing it from the heart? Do you really love him? Do you really love him to take over your life? To help you with your temptations this morning? I hope so. Amen. And God is telling us that he, he really, really, to have his whole work, will done in your entire life. And every point, no matter the cost, no matter the cost, the commandment will stop Christians sometime here today. And only very few are willing, or very few are willing to take that Christianity to that level. Amen. And this means it just it just means turning everything over to Christ. Amen. He grows great and, and multiplies itself beyond calculation. No one ever took the first drink of alcohol, okay, with the intent of becoming an alcoholic. Amen, John? Help me now. Don't go to sleep. John got one eye. Folks, you got to laugh at this. He got one eye going like this. And it was wide open. <laughs> Amen. He's with me, though. He's still with me. Amen. So then when lust has conceived, conceived means to clasp or to seize. Uh, be not mistaken. Lust will bring conception. Amen. There's no abortion available for this conception. There's none. Our society seems to think that man can correct everything. Man can't correct everything. Only God. Man can't save you. For those that go to another denominational church, you know, reverence the Pope. Hello? Well, I got somebody over here. I know that. Anyways, endure means to stay under, behind, remain, uh, to undergo and bear trials. Amen? Have fortitude, preserve, and abide, endure. Take patiently to stay under the pressure, remain strong to undergo the depths of temptation, to bear the trials, to preserve, amen, to preserve, to suffer patiently. There is a cure. There is a cure. There is a way out. There is victory in every temptation that we face morning and night and evening. <coughs> now I ask you again, how many of you had temptations this morning? Well, it's looking better now. Amen. We've all had temptations. Amen. My wife fixed three pancakes and she said, You want another one? Yeah, give me another one. <laughs> Blood me. That's sin. Amen. Well, 1 John 5 4, the Bible says, Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Even our faith. The cure is by faith, folks. Amen? Amen. Faith, faith. The same faith that brought salvation also, listen, also brings victory over any certain sin that you might have. Amen? Every one of us came in here to this church this morning, and we sat right down on the pews, didn't we? Uh, we had faith those pews would hold some of us up. <laughs> uh, we just come in and sit right down there with Brother Brown. I watched him this morning, but he was wiggling around and flipping down on that seat. He didn't worry about it. He had faith that seat told him up. Amen. Why can't we have that same faith in Christ? Amen. I was telling him in Sunday school, in fact, I've never seen Christ. Never seen God. I've seen what He's done. I've seen what He's done. I've seen what He's done to other people, to me. But I took Him to His Word. In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. I believe that. By faith, I believe that. It, it, listen, it didn't come from the big bang. Amen. And by the way, I'm not from the monkeys. Amen. You don't see no big tail on me. Amen. Amen. It's by faith. By faith. God does it. There in Romans 10 and 9, that if thou shalt what? Confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, huh? and shalt believe in thine heart that, that God hath raised thee from the dead, thou what? Shall be saved. Simple. And people make it complicated. No, I can't get saved because I do this and I do it. Yes, you can. Just go by faith. Amen. 
He said also in verse 11, so for the scripture said, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. By the way, are you ashamed of Christ this morning? Hello? Hello? If not, you better hit the altar this morning. Amen? I mean, if you are saved, maybe you better hit the altar. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon Him. <laughs> all that call upon Him. That's amazing. He don't just save a certain bunch of people. Right. He saves everybody. Right. Everybody who so will. Come to Him, amen, and receive Him as Lord and Savior. Mm, I like that. I go down to the Caribbean islands, and we started ministries in Bar uh, Barbados, St. Lucia, and Grenada. I'm telling you what, you talk about people that love the Lord. They're different. They, but by this time, they'd be up shouting and running the aisles and waving hands, amen, for that faith and having that faith in Christ, amen. Oh, I'm telling you, it's different because they've got more faith than a lot of people. They've got more faith because they don't have nothing. <laughs> so they have to depend on God. Right. We here in the United States, we got everything. Amen? We're, we're, we got everything at our, at our fingertips. We got everything. Nothing by faith, hardly. Nothing by, just flick on the, flick on the computer, boom. Yes, there it is. There it is. No faith in that. No faith in that. Boy, in our country's in turmoil. This election that's coming up, what a shame. What a shame. I don't know about y'all, but a guy that stands up and cusses every other word and uh, downs people and, and yada, 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 don't even talk about the basic situation that's going on in the world. Uh, don't believe I want to vote for that guy. Uh, you vote who you want to. That's your privilege. But to me, that no, that's not going to make a good president. I mean, when he stands out and boldly curse and use God's name in vain, amen? That's a sad, sad fellow, amen? He needs to be saved. He needs to be saved, amen? So you say, well, Brother Lawrence, uh, what's the cure for temptation? Well, there in James chapter 1, verse 12, the Bible says again, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life. Uh, which the Lord hath promised to them that love Him. Endureth. Amen. So we go on down and we see there in, in Romans 10, 13, it says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You know, listen, you know you're saved because you did what the Word of God uh, instructed you to do. Right? 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 So, you understand that you're saved when you do what God's told you to do. He said, confess with thy mouth. Thou shalt be saved. There's a lot of this easy prayerism that's going on around this world today. You know, you know what I'm saying? What I'm saying about easy prayerism. I want you to follow me in prayer, Brother John Brown, and we'll get you saved. God, forgive me. I'm an old sinner. Please give me the Bible and save me. Now, did you mean that? Yeah, he meant that. Amen. Huh? Now, see, see, he got saved according to the rest of the world. But now if I said, Brother Brown, I said, listen, I'll pray with you, but you're going to have to ask God to save you yourself. So you go ahead and do that, Brother Brown. You might get saved again this morning. You see what I'm saying? If it comes from his heart, amen, that's doing business with God. It comes from my heart, and I'm not doing business with Him. Amen? And so we have a lot of that easy prayerism. Do you know, I, I had studied the other day statistics, Brother Ben, when I was on the road, I stopped on reading my Bible, and I, they got on my computer, and I got to look it up. I said, you know what? 82% of the world are, is the people that are lost. Mark 7, 13. Wide is the way to destruction. Right. And there will be many that go therein. Many. 82% that's unsaved. Amen. In the world. Well, the Bible is so true, isn't it? Amen. And verse 14 said, Narrow is the way, and there will be few that go therein. Few. I hope 
I hope you're one of the few this morning. Amen? Amen. I hope so. Oh, listen. Uh, your faith in the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ, that same faith that brought your salvation will also bring your victory over any certain domineering sin that you have in your life. And don't sit there this morning and tell me you don't have any sin. Liar, liar, your pants on fire. <laughs> Amen. Amen. See, it's, it's natural human beings. We're going to sin. Now, it may not be a bad sin if there's such things as a bad sin. But we've sinned. Every one of us has this one. Right. Amen. <clears throat> Oh my. I was in a restaurant yesterday and I asked for some ketchup. They said, We're out. I said, Dee -dee 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 -dee. I give her down the road and I thought to myself, well, You're a big dummy. You just sinned. Talking mean to that lady. Like, of course, she didn't hear me. I talked to myself. Amen. And I asked God to forgive me. See, we sin and a lot of times we don't even know it. Do we, Brother Brown? Don't. Nod your head. Amen. That's right. Amen. And listen, we will. We'll sin and not even know it. Amen. And like I said, it could be a big sin or a small sin. Amen. There are Ephesians again. In, in 2.8, the Bible says, For grace are you saved through faith and not of yourselves. What? It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Amen. So the word faith in verse 8 is the same word in 1 John. 5, 4, for everyone born of God overcomes the world. Amen? Amen? Not of works, lest any man should boast. If we could obtain victory by works, uh, we would have a place to boast, we would have a place to boast about. Amen? And faith was not complete within itself. For to me, what? That to live in Christ and to die is the gain. Amen? Amen? There in Galatians 2, 20, the Bible says, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now what, live in the flesh, I live by faith. I live by faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. That he gave his life for me. By the way, he gave his life for you too. You sitting here this morning, you don't know Christ as your Savior. He gave his life for you. If you're the only person on earth, he died for you, sir. He died for you, ma'am. Amen. He died for you, young man, young lady. Amen. If you're the only person on earth, he died for you. Oh, my. What, what a glorious thing that was. Amen. There are many references in the New Testament of Christ in you and, 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 and uh, you in Christ and abiding in Christ. And these are not figures of speech, but it, literal and actual blessed fact. Amen. Amen. Christ is in me. Christ I lives in me when I got to say Amen. And by the way, I got that by faith. Amen. So he's, he listen, him as a, a he's a, an external salver savior and one who did the saving work on the outside and listen, he must come to the knowledge by faith that Jesus Christ, listen now, is actually and literally within us. He lives within us. Amen. I like that. Even more than that, He Himself continu continues our very life, taking us, uh, uh, the body, uh, our, our body, and mind and spirit into union with Himself. And while He re retains our own identity, free will, and full, full moral uh, responsibility. Well, I'm glad I'm saved this morning. I'm glad I'm saved this morning. Amen. Amen. Oh, that's what, listen. Paul met in Philippians 1.21. It's for me to live is Christ and to die is to gain. Amen. He didn't say to me to live to be Christ-like nor to, to me to live like, uh, to have Christ help me. He didn't say that. Amen. He said, but, but Christ lives in me. Jesus Christ himself lives in me because of my life. And it ought to be in your, in your life also. I hope that's the case this morning. I hope that's the case. <laughs> Ephesians 3.19, And you know the love of Christ, which passes all understanding, the knowledge, uh, that you might be filled with what? The fullness of God. you be filled with the fullness of God. Does this mean that the believer will never sin again? No. No, we'll, we'll leave out here today and go sin. Amen. 
I ain't even going to the buffet today. <laughs> ah. You see, up Northwest Jesus, we got to hurry up and get out of here and beat those methods down at the buffet. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Not so. But see, we'll do that, won't we? We'll see it. We'll see it. Temptation is there. Let me have another scoop of that macaroni cheese. Amen. I better give me some more mashed potatoes, John. Amen. A little bit of gravy on top of it. Okay. I don't know why I'm picking on John today. I guess he's just easy. Amen. Some of those changes will be evident in your life when you have received Christ. The believer will enjoy a fellowship with God uh, supremely richer than anything in any skin that he can experience in his life. <coughs> I was talking to someone this morning, I believe with Miss, Miss uh, Patsy over there. I said, you know, you go visit some folks and they're not saved. Just how long can you stay in around that? I'm not comfortable. I'm just honest with you. I'm not comfortable with people that are unsaved. Right. Now that's, you know, maybe that's wrong to say, but he said, he said that uh, we're in the world, but we're not of the world. Yeah. Amen. We can go witness to it, but I can't stay in amongst them. You know where I'm at best? My church family. Yeah. Yeah. I get along better with my church family than I do with my natural family. Yeah. Some of you in here know what I'm talking about. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that something? You know why? Because he loves me. And I love my Jesus. I put him first on my list. You know, I loved my wife for 40 some years, almost 50 years. But he was always first in my life. My wife knew that. She didn't, she wasn't jealous because she knew him too. Amen. Amen. She put her put him first for me. Amen. There will be a new kind of victory over the besetting sins that once throttled the believer as, as he learns to trust in Christ for this victory that you have. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Amen? That's a good song. If you don't know it, you ought to learn it. Amen? So here, there will be a new kind of victory over besetting sins that once got into your life. The joy of heaven will be more possible to experience and to enjoy. Amen? What a joy that's going to be one day when we get to heaven. Amen? And heaven's real. Heaven's real. In case you don't know, heaven's real. Say, say heaven's real. Heaven's real. Amen. It's real. It's real. It's real. Amen. There's no in-between. There's heaven or hell. You're either going to heaven or you're going to go to hell. Man, I'd rather go to heaven. <laughs> According to my Bible. Amen. So listen, all this is grand because Christ lives in me. There's temptations that come in my life. Christ lives in me. I can beat those temptations. How does that victory come? Well, simply just surrender your life to Christ absolutely and unconditionally. Amen. Do you know Him today? Do you know? We'll sing, we'll sing, and we'll sing the song. I surrender all. Do we really mean that song? We say, I surrender all. Do we really mean that song? I wonder this morning. I hope this message blesses you this morning. I hope you know that when temptations come about, you can always depend on God. Yes. And He'll do away with those temptations in your life. Amen. Amen. you hear this morning, you never received Christ as your personal Savior. Wouldn't be a good day to start out. That first Sunday of the year. Oh my, wouldn't that be something? To have about 10, 15 people receive Christ this morning? Wouldn't that be neat? Wouldn't that be neat if we had 10, 15, 20, 25 people get their hearts right this morning? The first Sunday of 2016. Wouldn't that be neat, Brother Manny? Amen. Amen. Well, let's stay. I'd like to. I'd like to give an invitation at this time. And maybe some folks don't know what an invitation.